Hi friends, welcome to WQLN PBS Homeroom. My name is Miss Brittany, and the reason I love to teach is because I am able to learn with my students. Today we are going to discuss more about bunnies, but we are going to specifically investigate which types of bunnies live where we live, which is Pennsylvania. Let's get started. Before we get started investigating which types of bunnies live where we live, I want to see a thumbs up if you've ever seen a bunny outside of your house. Let's see those thumbs if you've ever seen a bunny outside of your house. Okay, I want you to give me a thumbs up if you've ever seen a bunny outside anywhere. So I want you to give me a thumbs up if you've ever seen a bunny outside anywhere. All right, I like seeing those thumbs. And give me a thumbs up if you've ever seen a bunny at a zoo or a pet store or maybe even on TV, right? I want you to give me a thumbs up if you've ever seen a bunny at a zoo, at a pet store, or even on the TV. Good, okay, so now, hmm, this one's gonna be a kind of tricky question, but I think you can handle it. I want you to tell me how many types or breeds of bunnies there are in the whole world, okay? So I want you to think of a number of how many types of bunnies live in the whole big world, all right? Think of your answer. I'm gonna count down. I want you to yell out your answer in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so I could have heard a range from zero maybe to like a million. Okay, good job, thank you for answering. Now, there are 305 known bunnies in the world. So that could be different types and different breeds. So that means they all have something similar and something different. So there's 305 known breeds of bunnies in the whole entire world. Okay. So now I want you to give me an answer of how many breeds or types of bunnies live in Pennsylvania, which is where we live, okay? I want you to think of your answer. How many types of the 305 do you think live in the same area that we do? Okay, give me your answer in five, four, three, two, one, and... Okay, so I could have heard zero, one, two, three, four, five, maybe even 10, 20. There's lots of different answers, but there are three different types of bunnies that live in the state of Pennsylvania where we live. Now we are going to get to investigate which different types of bunnies live where we are. And we're also going to discuss what a state is. Now we're gonna discuss what a state and what a country is. So real quick, what country do we live in? I want you to think of your answer. What country do we live in? All right, I want you to yell that out in five, four, three, two, one. All right, we live in the United States of America. So our country, I have a map, the United States of America. Okay, so a country is a landmass that is controlled by a single or one government. So our country is a huge landmass that is controlled by a single or one government. Our country does not have to be connected. So we have Alaska and Hawaii, which are not connected to the majority of the United States, and that's okay but they are still a part of the United States of America. So who is the face of our government? Who is the face of the United States of America's government? Okay, I want you to think of your answer. I want you to shout it out in five, four, three, two, one, and right. It's the president of the United States. So the president is the face of our country and of the United States of America's government. Okay, so we just talked about what a country is, and it is a landmass that is controlled by a single or one government. 
Now, our country can be divided into smaller parts, which are called states. Okay, so these states have different governments in each state. So when they come up with the rules, it only affects the state. It doesn't affect the whole United States of America. So the state that we live in, what do you, what is it called? What is the state that we live in called? Okay, once you think of that answer, you're gonna shout it out in five, four, three, two, one, and right. We live in the state that's called Pennsylvania. All right, so Pennsylvania is in the northeast part of the United States. And on this map, it is green. All righty. So a state is a smaller part of a country. All right, so now we're gonna get to investigate the three different types of bunnies that live in the state of Pennsylvania. Let's get started. All righty, so now we're going to investigate the three different types of rabbits that live in the state of Pennsylvania. But before we get started, I want you to tell me what a state is. What is a state? All right, think of your answer. You're gonna shout it out in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Right, so a state is a part of a country. And the state that we live in is Pennsylvania, and we are a part of the country, the United States of America. Great work, guys. So the first rabbit that we are gonna talk about that lives in Pennsylvania is the Appalachian cottontail rabbit. And this is what the rabbit looks like. So there's one picture, and here is another picture of the Appalachian cottontail rabbit. So I showed you two pictures of the Appalachian cottontail rabbit, and I want you to tell me what were his characteristics. So what colors were he? How did his ears look like? What did his feet look like? And if you saw a tail, what did his tail look like? All right, I'm gonna show those pictures one more time, and I want you to think of those questions in your mind. So here's a first picture. What colors do you see? What do his ears look like? What does his feet look like? And a tail, if you can see one. All right, and the second picture. Remember, you're thinking, what does his ears look like? What colors do you see? What does his tail look like? And maybe even his feet. All righty, so first question, what colors do you see? What colors do you see on our Appalachian cottontail rabbit? All right, I want you to yell them out in five, Four, three, two, one, zero. Right, so you could have said brown, you could have said gray, could have said black, you could have said white, or maybe even a reddish color. Great work. All right, what about his ears? What did his ears look like? All right, I want you to tell me in five, four, three, two, one, zero. So his ears were kind of a medium size, they weren't too big and they weren't too small. Good work. All right, now, his tail. I know we couldn't see his tail too much, but the Appalachian cottontail rabbit is called the cottontail because his tail is white and bushy, almost like a cotton ball. All right, the Appalachian cottontail rabbit lives in high elevations or high areas in Pennsylvania. So that means that he lives like in the mountains or maybe even on the hills. He likes being higher up than low valleys or in the low areas. Alrighty, now we are going to talk about the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. All right, I'm gonna show two pictures of the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. Here's the first one. And here is the second. All right, I want you to tell me some characteristics that you notice about those two pictures of the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. So remember, characteristics can be the fur color, it can be the ear size, his feet size, or even his tail, all right? I'm gonna show those pictures one more time and I want you to think about those things. Okay, here's the first picture. 
and the second picture. All righty, our first question. What colors did you see on the Eastern Cottontail rabbit's fur? All right, you're gonna shout that answer out in five, four, three, two, one. All right, so you could have said brown, you could have said gray, black, or even white. Now, a difference between the Appalachian cottontail and the Eastern cottontail is that the reddish color from the Appalachian cottontail is not the same as the brownish gray color of the Eastern cottontail rabbit. All right, now what about his ear size? What about his ear size? Right. Was it bigger or smaller than the Appalachian Cottontail Rabbit? All right, give me a thumbs down for smaller and give me a thumbs up for bigger. Ready, go. Yes, it was bigger. His ear is bigger than the Appalachian Cottontail Rabbit. Great work, guys. All right, now what about feet? What did you notice about his feet? All right, I'm gonna show that. What do you notice about his feet? Are his feet big or are they small? All right, give me a thumbs down for small and a thumbs up for big. Ready, set, go. All right, his feet, his back feet are big. Good job, guys. All right, now my last question is about his tail. What did his tail look like, okay? I'll show a picture so you can maybe think about it a little bit. Alrighty, what was his tail like? Tell me in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Right, it was white and fluffy, just like the Appalachian Cottontail Rabbit. So the Appalachian Cottontail Rabbit and the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit have the same or similar tail, and it's like that white, fluffy, it kind of looks like a cotton ball. That's why they have the name Cottontail. Alrighty, so the Eastern Cottontail rabbit likes to live in low areas, maybe like um, your backyard or um, woods that are in the low areas, not in the mountains. So that is another difference between the Appalachian and the Eastern Cottontail rabbit. Appalachian likes to live in high or in the mountains, and the Eastern likes to live in low, like in our backyards or um, in the woods. Alrighty, so now, we are going to talk about the snowshoe hare. But before we begin, I want to explain that a hare and a rabbit are not the same thing. A hare is a different animal altogether other than a rabbit. So a hare, they have lots of differences. They have a few similarities, so that's why some people mistake them. They kind of can look alike, but a hare has bigger ears and bigger feet. So our snowshoe hare, looks like this. That is one picture. Now here is another picture of our snowshoe hare. All right, same thing. I want you to think about those characteristics that you notice. So his fur color, his ear color, his feet color, and also his tail. All right, back to the first picture. You're thinking of his characteristics. And the second picture. All right, first question, what color was his fur? I want you to shout that answer out in five, four, three, two, one. Right, his fur was white. He does have a little bit of brown or black in his ears, but the rest of his fur is white. Good job. All right, now what about his ears? What are his ears, or is his ears big, or are they small, all right? Thumbs up for big, and thumbs down for small. Ready, set, go. All right, his ears are big. Good job, all righty. Now, what about his feet size? Are his feet size big, or are they little? All right, ready, set, go. Right, his feet are big. Especially his back feet, they are big. All right, and last thing, if you could see a tail, what color is his tail? All right, I want you to shout that out in five, four, three, two, one, and right, his tail is white. So 
there are some similarities and some differences between the Appalachian cottontail, the Eastern cottontail, and the snowshoe hare. So the similarities between the Appalachian Eastern and snowshoe hare is that they all have white tails. The similarities between the Eastern cottontail and the snowshoe hare is that their ears are bigger and their feet are bigger. Now the differences is their fur color. So the snowshoe hare has completely white fur. The Appalachian has more of a reddish brown and the Eastern has more of a brownish gray. Now the snowshoe hare, he likes to live in wetlands. So he likes to live where there is water for most of the year. And he is mainly found in Canada, but he can also be found in the top parts of Pennsylvania. All right, so now we're gonna get to do an at-home activity that is making a Appalachian or Eastern cottontail rabbit. All righty, friends, now we get to make an at-home learning activity that goes along with what we just talked about. So what was the main or common types of rabbits or bunnies that are found in Pennsylvania? All right, I want you to yell those out in five, four, three, two, one, go. So I could have heard Appalachian cottontail rabbit, I could have heard Eastern cottontail rabbit, or even the snowshoe hare. Well, for today's activity, we are going to make a Eastern or Appalachian cottontail rabbit. So our rabbit is gonna have a face, he's gonna have some rabbit ears, and also a cottontail. So to get started with this activity, you're gonna need a few materials, but before you get your materials, you need to ask your grown-up if you can do this activity, and if you could, if you need, you can go to wqln.org and go to our at-home learning activity page, and the activity and the directions will come up. So for this activity, you are going to need a brown paper bag. You are going to need some crayons. You are going to need a cotton ball, glue, and some scissors. The first thing that you're gonna do is to ask your grown up to supervise you and watch you do this activity because the scissors are gonna be kind of tricky with making the rabbit ears. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brown paper bag and I am going to draw some ears onto my Eastern or Appalachian cottontail rabbit. Now, if you want to do the Eastern cottontail rabbit, you wanna make his ears a little bit bigger. And if you want to do the Appalachian cottontail rabbit, you'll make his ears a little bit smaller. I am going to do the Eastern cottontail rabbit, so I'm gonna make his ears a little bit bigger, so that way, I know I'm making the Eastern rabbit. So I have his ears drawn. So I'm gonna show you his ears. So you can see. Now, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm gonna cut along where I drew his ears. So I'm gonna cut all the way down on both sides of his ear. Do the other side. And one more side. All right, so when you cut your ears, it should look something like this, so there's still parts connected. Now you're gonna take your scissors and you are gonna cut off the extra pieces, so the outside pieces on both sides. So I cut off one side. Now I'm gonna cut off the next side. So then I cut off the second side. And now to do the middle part, this is where you might need some grown up supervision. You are gonna take it and you're gonna fold it down so that the ears stay up. And that way you can cut straight across the center to make his ears. Now, if you open him up and look at the side, there are some side parts. You can totally leave those or you can just cut them straight across 
to where it only has the front and the back ears. So I cut out this part straight across. All right, so I'm gonna do it on both sides. And now if I open my Eastern Cottontail Rabbit, he is a little baggy with some ears, but he needs a face and he needs his cottontail. So I'm gonna draw his face on. So with that, I'm gonna draw eyes. Two eyes for my rabbit. I'm gonna draw him a pink nose, even though Eastern Cottontails don't have pink noses. I want mine to have pink, a pink nose. And then I'm gonna draw some whiskers on my rabbit. And a little mouth. I'm gonna draw a smile because he's a happy cottontail rabbit. All right, so I have my face. And now I need to add my cottontail. To make my cottontail look really fluffy, I'm gonna kind of pull apart some of the cotton ball. I don't want it to de detach, still want it to be together, but I want his cottontail to be really, really, really big and fluffy. So I'm gonna pull down the back part so that I can glue his tail on, get my glue. I'm gonna put a big circle of glue on the back part. And then I'm gonna take my tail and I'm gonna glue it just like that. So when you open up your rabbit, he should look like this. So he's got a cotton tail, he's got big ears, and he's already brown. If you want, you can color him reddish to make him an Appalachian. Or if you wanna make a snow hair, you can color him white or use a white paper bag. All right, so now we are going to read a story about a rabbit who had too many carrots. So now it is story time. So you can sit down and get a little cozy, but we are gonna read about a rabbit who had too many carrots. Our book is written and illustrated by Katie Hudson. Too many carrots. To do, eat carrots, plant carrots, collect carrots, and eat carrots. Rabbit loved carrots. He collected them wherever he went. Rabbit was proud of his collection and burrowed it away in his cozy hole. But Rabbit had a problem, a big problem. He couldn't sleep. His cozy hole was too crowded to live in. Look at all of those carrots. I need a place to sleep, Rabbit told Tortoise. You could share my house, Tortoise offered. It looks cozy and snug, Rabbit said. Maybe it's a little too snug for two, suggested Tortoise. Not at all, said Rabbit. So he got into Tortoise's shell, which is the Tortoise's home. Do you think a rabbit and a tortoise could fit in that shell? No. Uh-oh, oh dear, ouch, ah, crash. Oh dear, well, perhaps we can stay in bird's nest, said rabbit. My nest is quite small, rabbit, said bird. I'm sure we will all fit, replied Rab Rabbit. Rabbit hauled all his carrots up the tree. Whoa, groaned Tortoise and Bird as the branch wobbled and swayed. A 
and snapped. Crash. I'm so sorry, bird. Now three of us don't have a place to sleep, said Rabbit. You can sleep in my house, offered Squirrel. Oh, thank you, Squirrel. How kind of you, said Rabbit. I don't think any more, fair, any more carrots will fit, Rabbit, said Squirrel. Just a few more, replied Rabbit. Uh-oh, whimpered Tortoise, Bird, and Squirrel. Crack, crack, crash. Now four of us don't have anywhere to sleep, grumbled Squirrel. You can sleep at my house, called Beaver. It has plenty of space. Great, I can bring even more carrots, Rabbit said with a, swap, a smile. But with all your carrots, we can't fit inside, said Beaver, a bit bewildered. Just then the rain started. Tortoise shivered, bird whimpered, Squirrel squeaked. And Beaver heard a terrible rumble as his house collapsed. Oh no, my house, yelled Beaver. Oh no, my carrots, cried Rabbit. Crash! The friends groaned as they swept up onto the riverbank. Rabbit felt terrible. His friends were cold, tired, and homeless, and it was all his fault. Even worse, Rabbit still had a, all of his carrots and his house. And that's when he realized there was only one thing to do. Share everything with his friends. After all, carrots weren't for collecting. They were for sharing. And sharing made everything better. The end. What was your favorite part about our story, Too Many Carrots by Katie Hudson? All right, what was your favorite part? Okay, you're gonna tell me in five, four, three, two, one, and whoa. So there could have been favorite part was when the nest cracked, when the rabbit and the tortoise tried to share a home, or even when the beaver's home collapsed and the f it went down the river. My favorite part was the end where rabbit decided to share his home and his carrots with his friends. I hope you got to learn a lot about rabbits today, especially the three types of rabbits that live in Pennsylvania. Before we end, I want you to tell me what a state is. Ready? In five, four, three, two, one. Right, a state is a part of a country. And the, the state that we live in is Pennsylvania, and the country that we live in is the United States of America. Great work today, guys. Thank you for watching. Keep reading, keep learning, keep watching. WQLN PBS Homeroom, where learning is brought to life.